Yeah, we could do Ajahn Patu. <laughs> good ass pictures. Uh, good to go? Recording? Probably didn't need that. Yeah, set us off. You got me sitting in the middle. I don't want to. I don't know, you set us off. All righty. Welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is Tuesday, August 29th. Most Dangerous Game Show comes out tonight. Yes. So, well, once this podcast out is out, you can go watch that Most Dangerous Game Show right now. And what is the schedule for that? Every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Every Tuesday? You're doing once a week? It, are what you, do you mean you're doing? What are you talking about? It's very spread out. I like it. Like, are you sure you like session. it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, this new thing like periodic programming. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea. It's fucking nuts. Everybody's already like no sass, me no watch. But uh, luckily, we do have Francis on. Yes. Not only this show, but on uh, Barshall's most dangerous game show. Yeah, that's right. You get one half of Fran Squatch in this year's most dangerous game show. And I'll tell you what, I didn't fucking mail it in like I did. <laughs> he tried his hardest. I unplug this. I don't want to look at it. Yeah, just turn it around. I wasn't I wasn't lying low, which is the correct way to say that. <laughs> he doesn't want to see himself. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be fucking. Uh, it's gonna be sweet. But you don't have to promote that. What What the hell have you guys been up to? Not much. Just got back to New York yesterday. <laughs> just chilling, <laughs> dude. I I don't know how you do it. I what? don't know how you can uh, just get away with the shit that you get away with. What did I get away with? You know, just being kind of at, at your own distance. I wasn't at my own distance. I went home last week after the Barstool Awards. But you, he runs at exact his own pace. Mm -hmm. He's not, he doesn't get, there's, there's no rabbit that he's going to chase. No. There's nothing that's going to take him out of the, so the last time we saw each other, Barstool Awards. Yeah. Actually, the three of us ended our night uh, together kind of kind of happily right that was nice it was, that like was great three in the morning we were smoking a joint outside of sass and francis's hotel just yeah. talking about you know what we were sucks. talking about comedy yeah, we were talking like about loser what a surprise and then sass and i went inside and we did what we always do we went to the vending machine yeah we got <laughs> snacks and then uh your piece of shit. only my card my card works twice it was only you could only use card you and it worked it worked i got a drink hour. and a snack and then it stopped working. Yeah, he broke it. So Francis couldn't get any. Short circuited it. <laughs> and I was trying to not let him. I think I was trying to not let you get the junk food that you wanted. And I was trying to select something healthier for you. No, I don't think I, I got a boxing bag of Doritos. me out. We were kind of wrestling and I loved <laughs> oh. that. Then it broke. Francis couldn't get it. All. Francis wanted to get a Fiji water. That's all he wanted. Was yeah, I wanted some water. water. That's so not filling up one of those stupid plastic cups. that you It had water in the hotel. They'd Tell him about the, the ills of eating right before you go to bed. What are you doing? You're spiking your blood sugar at a time when you're supposed to be coming down. You're disrupting oh, your need, metabolism. I didn't eat enough that day. I didn't eat anything. Yeah. You I know what? I'm trying to look needed, good. Yeah, but I needed, I didn't want to be hung over the next day. So I got a Gatorade Zero. Such a college mentality. I got a G-Zip and I got a, some Doritos. <laughs> it's what they tell you in alcohol EDU. No, that that helps. You have missed. The G zip is not enough. doing that. I mean, I've seen you guys hung over, and it looks significantly worse than I look hung over. I wasn't hung ten years older than you. Ro you can see Rome when Rome's hung over because he comes down. He's never wearing a hat when he's hung over. My shit's his always hair's, like his mad hair is all messy. Yeah. You can like smell the alcohol through my hair. It's fucking <laughs> a disgusting feeling. But at the same time, I was. Oh, he comes. He comes down from the, into the hotel lobby just soaking wet <laughs> every time. <laughs> His cheeks are all red. No, it's because I work out the morning after I drink to try and lick the hangover. Ah, it's that's a terrible impressive. idea. That terrible idea. No, that's a man's move. That's a move that you have to be doing. No. I'm not eating G-zips G before I fucking go to bed. It's a mistake. That's the hangover cure. So did you offer to share your Doritos with Francis? It was a tiny bag of Doritos. I didn't want any. I wasn't having that. Mm -mm. Couldn't have rationed them out for, well, for your boy? I Unless they'd had some, you know, quinoa crisps. <laughs> Some or some cauliflower puffs, <laughs> which you can sometimes find in gas stations now. Yeah, those are nice, but it's, some skinny pop. They're can still I, like the same as uh, yeah. as chips. Can I can I rewind us? Looking for some Oreo thins. <laughs> yeah, take the cream out. 
<laughs> see the crackers. Chew them up, spit them out. Yeah. <laughs> Don't swallow. <laughs> Take us me, back to win. Let me rewind us to a very um, amazing moment. And I'm glad you guys are having me on today. I appreciate it because this is where I would want to break this down. Um, so Sass was supposed to present at the Barstool Awards show. Uh, and he only found out day of that you were not, was not. that you'd been... St- I found out through Brandon that I was not on yeah. the yak, live on the yak. And a lot of people had been spiked from the show. I, I assumed I had been spiked as well. I was not, which I was thrilled by. <laughs> now, I did something... Let, let me... I want to I want to hear your take on how this all unfolded. Sure. Sass was really bummed out. He'd written some r- really good jokes. We'd been spitballing jokes back and forth. And I, he was pissed and he was sort of confiding in me. And Which is good, by the way, that he cared. I think that Sass, well, I only the ca- I of apathy is, has... Uh, I care because set. there's no other scenario where I would use those jokes. It's like, what am I going to wait for the 40th anniversary and then reuse <laughs> yeah. these jokes? Spot on. Yeah. So I said, hey, I don't know if this is something you'd want, but I would happily uh, have you give me some of the jokes since I'm presenting and I will credit you on stage yeah with the jokes and he was like yeah i'm okay with that i'm like okay so we meet before the award show we're spitballing jokes i run my set he and i work on some of his jokes he gives me a great joke he gave me the joke where he said um you know when dave sold the company and bought it back for a dollar i texted him congratulations and smitty texted him jew (laughs) now (laughs) that's an incredible joke for what it's worth Sass's original version of that joke was uh, I texted Dave congratulations and then I stole Smitty's phone and texted him Jew. Yeah, we trimmed it down. That was the uh, what the what Smitty said happened. Right, right, right. I said, no, we need to we need to we need to hit this hard. Economize the language. Well, it's more like it's funnier if we continue the narrative that we that Dave thinks Smitty was the one who sent the text all those years ago. Right, right. And Sass was like, great. So to me, that is a collaborative work on that joke. 99% of the credit goes to Sass. <laughs> I mean, I helped you with some of yours too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I said, yeah. ditch that, say this. But you'll see where I'm going. Okay. On stage, I do the joke. Joke murders. It was probably, almost certainly, the best joke of my set. Of the night, I'd say. And Dave goes on the next day to say on radio, that's the best joke of all time. (laughs) Now. (laughs) Which it certainly is not. No. Take that. This is a guy who hates stand-up comedy. Hates jokes. Hates jokes. There's a clip of him laughing his head off. Yeah. Right? I... Have you you've watched some of the Comedy Central roasts? Of course. Have you ever? You know that all those presenters, yeah, none of them have write people jokes. write their jokes for them. Yes. Have you ever, in the history of the Comedy Central roasts, seen one of those comedians after telling a very good joke say, "By the way, so and so wrote that joke." No, that's never happened. Right. So I am patting myself on the back here <laughs> for doing. <laughs> How is the agreement? Very so. The agreement was I would give you the joke if you said I said if you said I wrote it. You did give credit, or 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 I could have, or I could have not done your joke, and yeah. and then no just credit. done all and done no credit. Yeah. yeah. So what's your what's your beef? I don't have any beef. He doesn't have a beef. <laughs> this is just me. I walked away. I, well, this is me being frustrated Thank and you. airing it. And so to, to close this out, uh, you know, I give Sass the credit, right? And yeah. then, and then, um, the next day on radio, Dave says that was the best joke of all time. And then, um, Tommy Smokes was like, "Wait a minute, that was actually Sass. That was yes. Sass who wrote it. That was Sass, 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 Sass." And uh, I don't get any credit whatsoever for any of my jokes. Everyone liked your jokes. Oh, yes. Everyone liked your joke in my set, oh. which you got credit for <laughs> because you I'm gave... magnanimous. <laughs> because I, I have a big joke. heart. I wrote the joke. I have a big heart. He has a big heart and he was giving and he put you on the map and you got the credit for it. No one would have even ha- <laughs> I heard got the of credit. your name. No one I would think have, I Dave de- wouldn't have deservingly got there. the credit. What? Let me I don't think you. I didn't deserve the credit. It was my joke. Let me ask you this. 
I tell the joke. Yeah. Right? Move Bombs. on. Don't don't give you credit. What do you do? Are you I would have taken it online and I would have gone, I wrote that joke, by the way. Oh. He would have stewed too. That's a lot smaller than what I did. Yeah, no, but I don't, I'm not, I was talking about this with Nick actually that day when he, I was like, I don't know how you do this because like, Nick writes jokes all the time for people. Right. I was like, I don't know how you can live with that. With like, there's something that will be uh, like, damn, that was so yeah, fucking Nick funny. Nick and I is something about, you know, we don't necessarily need credit for everything. <laughs> I do. That we can do. It's nice to see. Where I, that just bought me like three more months at this company. <laughs> You're welcome. That credit. I need the credit. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. How about yeah. a fucking thank you? What am, I don't know what I'm thanking you for. Or doing something. You did a great no, job delivering no the joke. I was happy with that. ever done. But that was you. A, you said it to me first. Said, I'll give you credit. And I said, awesome. And then at the when we were going over the jokes in that room for like an hour, I said, are you going to give me credit on that? And you said, yeah, 100%. There's one other piece that I forgot to mention. I watched a clip of you chewing out Blatman. And yes. in that clip... Someone was like, uh, you said something like blah, 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 jokes, jokes. And they were, someone was like, well, why didn't you? I don't know. And then you were like, because Francis wanted them. Remember that? Oh, no, because Big Cat was going to use them. And then I said, no, I'd rather have Francis do them. No, no, no. You said Francis. Wa- it's too late. Francis wanted them. Oh, I think that was just saying that to be annoying to Big Cat. Oh, yeah. Let's be clear. I didn't want them. Oh, I you wanted, wanted to them. You wanted them bad. You. Yeah, you I wanted said, to, let me get my hands on that Jew joke. <laughs> yeah. I had confidence in my jokes. Yeah. I knew I was going to have... You yeah, had you a need, You know joke. you needed a little cherry on top. No. Yeah, and the Jew joke was I didn't get any credit for it. <laughs> What's the point? You got to feel the laughs. Don't What's, you think I wanted to feel the laughs, it's brother? It's like me doing a cover song up there. Oh, dude. There's some good cover songs out yeah, there. Yeah, there sure are. Yeah, and you did a great cover. But you're like Tracy Chapman being in the audience as someone plays Fast Car. Yeah. Like you got to feel the the buzz of every the laughter in the room. Oh, yeah. You got to bask in it and be like, yeah, that was that was me. And the immediate recognition that Francis got gave. got all the recognition. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm and happy with no it. no gratitude. I was you great. No I was gratitude. pumped with how it went. I was very happy with how it went. Tell you what, if the roles were reversed, he's not giving me credit. Oh, I would 100% give you no credit. I would have gone, Francis chance. wrote that one. <laughs> After the biggest laugh? Yeah, obviously. If Francis asked me to, I would have been shocked if you were like, if you just didn't say anything. It would have been crazy. If he looked at you. Yeah. Like, if he looked at you. Oh, I'm presenting. Like not, I'm presenting. <laughs> I'm presenting crazy. a set. I'm doing a set. Like evilly looked but at. It wasn't like a roast. traditional. If it was like a legitimate roast. Yeah, no. I will say, all jokes aside, uh, you know, I do the joke and then I'm like looking at my thing. I'm nervous. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, on to the next one. And I think I started to tell the next joke. And then I was like, ah, wait, let that breathe. Sass yeah, you did. Told that joke. Yeah. There's, he wrote that joke. That was a SAS joke. All credit to SAS. Did you know how many pay-per-view buys it had when you were up there? No. Oh, Cause I would have been shit in my pants. Was it that. a ton? Or I think it was like 40 K, right? 50K. Holy shit. If I knew 40 yeah. K people were watching live, I would have crumbled on stage. Yeah, how many pay-per-view buys was your last time being on stage for Barstool? <laughs> Not enough to keep me at the company. It's a low blow. Low blow Not of enough the to century keep me the there. Company. By the way, <laughs> I want to explain one more thing. Jesus. Uh, I prefaced that whole set by being like, this might be the last three minutes of my time yeah. at the company. And the reason was I had a bunch of jokes written. I, got I had a couple of jokes. Out. This is the other reason I was frustrated. My best joke of my entire set they it didn't was let forbidden him do. from telling. By whom? I'm not going to say. Okay. But somebody who, who you respected enough to forbid. Yeah. 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 Pretty much one of the two people that he's respected enough to forbid. I was told <laughs> don't do it. And uh, that would have been, I think, the joke that might have towed it, gone toe to toe. Yeah, that was a very That's funny joke. joke. It was very funny. You would have been, been like, that was mine. <laughs> yeah. That joke I was wrote mine. That. Sat, yeah. I w- Sass did not. Yeah, yeah. Sass had nothing to do one. with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sass is going to take credit for it, like push a T taking credit for Kanye shit. Yeah. He's going to be like, That's all mine. Not that, not that anyone gives a fuck, but I do think that the show would have been better if they dropped the house lights by like a lot. Mm-hmm. The, the fact that it was bright in there, it was like, no, like people are making jokes about like Erica and Dave and then you're just like sitting next to Erica and Dave. Yeah. Like they're looking at everyone laughing. You can't Good. laugh behind someone's back. Yeah. Dude, Smitty came up to me after oh, yeah, the he show. Was, he was pissed. Legitimately angry that we had done that joke. Yeah. He wasn't happy. What did he say? He said something about not wanting, you know, not wanting his kids 20 years from now to find out that that find that or something yeah if his kids 20 years from now are watching that he's got bigger problems 
if they're like sitting down watching the 20th barstool anniversary and that like i'm jokingly <laughs> crediting a fucking running bit yeah to him i don't think it, i don't think it was bad at all no i don't think he actually was mad either no i mean also everybody got it that night yeah, most yeah. worse than that. Everybody. I was it. probably the most that lighthearted. Was the, that was the part that pissed me off was that, you know, after I was told not to do the joke that I wanted to do, Nate went on stage and did a very similar joke. And then Ryan Whitney did a similar joke. Yeah. And Kirk, clearly none no, of that Kirk shit didn't. was off limits. And it's just one of those things where it's like, don't ask for permission. But Mark I, would be good at like a roast. Hmm. He doesn't give a fuck. No, he doesn't. When he looked at Caroline and goes, by the way, Barbie sucks. <laughs> that was cr- That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was nuts. Just to be an asshole. Yeah, just to be a <laughs> For dick. For no reason. Just that to was be crazy. An asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Look dead in her eyes. It was uh, such a fun night. And I really think that, uh, like, the fact that you wrote that joke and the way that you went up and acquitted yourself, I think that that really proved that, like, planning, preparing, and going up with a plan for a scenario like that is what makes those things the best. And they should have leaned into more people that would do that. And that Sash should have been included. You Nick know, should have been in it for sure. Nick would have done a great job. I don't job know why you would have needed to. You got all the credit. Well, I, it would have been bad. I had <laughs> other jokes lauded. that I didn't get to do. You got all but, the credit. But uh, Say them now then if they're so great. No, they're, they're not great. That was the whole reason I gave Francis that one and not the other ones. <laughs> yeah, but now you're like, well, yeah. I didn't get to do all my other jokes. No, where, but where I mean... Like you, would, you had like a murderer's row of exclusively bangers. You're getting the Schrodinger's cat kind of... Well, like, I was under the impression that I had like 30 seconds. So I had like three yeah. jokes. So that's what so I was I, under so the impression I. of too. Yeah. And then Pat Beverly fil- filibustered up. Yeah, there. yeah. The mic and was walking around on stage like Steve Jobs dropping yeah. an iPhone. yeah. He did, mm-hmm. but it was. Have, a, did him and Taylor ever talk? Yeah, I think he. It, I think Taylor apologized to him. Oh, that's fine. What? Taylor Lewan? Yeah, Taylor Swift. What happened to them? No, I think he was like he. He was like considering that he, it was like the best athlete award, and he was like considering that there's like four athletes in here: me, Will Compton, Biz, and Whitney. Like no one else should be in the running for this award. And oh yeah, that's tough. Just uh, and omitted. He's the only active professional athlete. <laughs> there. Yeah, exactly. Now here's a question, Roan. Who had or is having the better professional sports career, Pat Bev or Taylor Lewan? Ooh. Actually, a tough question. I think it is a tough question. Taylor yeah. Lewan, three-time Pro Bowler. Yeah, Pat Bev never made a Pro Bowl, but he was all defense. Second team. Yeah, but multiple times second team. True. Um, so it's really hard to say one of them and Taylor Lewan at one point was one of the highest paid at his position he was at that time, the highest paid offensive line paid in the offensive of the league. tackle. Um, and so that that's, uh, it really is tough, but then Pat Bev is still playing and it's like Pat Bev also might be older than Taylor Lewan. So thus having a longer career. So it really is depends on how, question. how you rank it. It's, it's you I didn't also, realize how big Taylor used to be. Like physically, six seven, three hundred and ten yeah. pounds. He's fucking huge. Now he's just uh, slim and handsome. It's crazy yeah. how fast those guys lose weight. I mean, I every time I see him, he's down like twenty pounds. But I also it's from not working out at the mini golf like, event at the Super Bowl. Yeah. There was like a tray of. Have you ever seen those like mini cupcakes? Yeah, that are like literally yeah. like one centimeter in diameter. He stood over a mini cupcake and like grunted at himself to have the self-control of not having the small bite of mini cupcake yeah, with his geez. producers being like, don't do it, dude. You've been doing so good. Like oh my you've God. been crushing it. Yeah, but I can't imagine wanting to have that type of self-control. But then he, then he drinks a beaker of grog. <laughs> he is. He's always crushing a beaker of grog, he's, dude. I haven't a fucking, <laughs> what the fuck is a beaker of grog? beer can oh <laughs> oh he drinks a a fucking pitcher of yeah, beer as his beer yeah oh yeah like he'll take a pitcher and that's yeah. his beer he's a monster he we we had a good time on the uh on the really crate him. race i wrote I really 1200 words on taylor the one today that's why i know so much about him what did you uh say, six, about seven, what three ten off the all the head is six crazy. seven and one eighth inches and 300 I think it was 306 pounds something like that dude he had he ran a 482 40 yard dash at that height and weight which is utterly preposterous yeah I I cannot fathom that goat I feel like he uh, stopped liking me after I I uh at the 
mini golf event. I was like sideline reporting and I think I made like a spinning joke, just something in passing. Mm. I think he stopped. So you're telling me he doesn't take jokes well? <laughs> he stopped fucking with me. Because after. I really? wrote 1,200 like words like they... of jokes about him. <laughs> doesn't Bussin' with the Boys tweet out that clip like weekly? I don't know. I feel like our relationship came to a screeching halt after that. <laughs> I talked to Con I talked to Will for a while at the party. Yeah. He also didn't like me making a concussion joke, I don't think. Really? Yeah, I don't think anyone liked the jokes made about them. <laughs> you said I was gay. Yeah. I liked that. Yeah, because no that's actually the it. highest compliment. That's great. Uh, these know? days. Yeah, a lot of Cassius people. poor said you were you were gay. Nate said I wanted to be black. I thought that that was nice. I think I thought all of those jokes were like nice jokes and the kind of thing you make make jokes about it. A Friars Club type of like Shriners, yep. like established white guy roast. Without a doubt. It should have been a roast. Should have been. It would have been so fun. Yeah. It's kind of how, I mean, it, it was lightly like, I treated it. That's, but that's like you, you guys did. And then everyone else just went up and like said, Dave is the best person on earth. I will take a bullet for him any day of the week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone had the same speech. Right. Yeah. Which I guess, I mean, it's like part of it, but it would have been funny to have like funny, you know, <laughs> it would have been fun. It would have been have fun it. to have funny <laughs> in it. <laughs> Well, if only said. if only you were liked and valued here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I'm not. Everybody else is like, I sh shine my picture of the supreme leader Dave Portnoy every day before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. People, people love Dave. Yeah, but it's I guess when you see when you're on the firing squad and you see the man next to you get shot down, and the man on the other side get shot down. Yeah, you're gonna be loyal to the government. Mm. That type of vibe. Truth, Sage. Doesn't it feel like that? A lot of truth in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But I think it was a overall a fucking awesome award. What other like pay per view type events could we get going? I feel like if we pitch some pay per view events, we could be like, hey, "That was our idea." What's some other pay per view as yeah, we a weekly roast? roast. Wow, weekly roast weekly is crazy. Pay per view weekly. Weekly one, is fucking or, or, weekly a roast. A roast. A roast of one person in the office each week. Oh like, no, I was thinking just like present. a roast. A single roast? Who gets yeah. roasted, though? Dave. It would have to be him. Yeah. Right? I think, Dave roast would play. I think Dave Roast would play. I feel like we had the, that was a pretty good formula for something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what everyone had. Everyone had at least a Dave joke. Yeah. So. But how do you get out of that? I mean, yeah. You, how many dog collar jokes can you get? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I think that would be fun. I think that who else would be roastable? Is there anybody else that's even worthy of roasting? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, well, I don't think I, I think Pat, Dave would be able to take it is the thing. Like he'd handle it well. Yeah. There there it's it's crazy to think about who who could take jokes. You know who could really take a joke was Brianna Chicken Fry. She could? Dude. Didn't she fucking, specifically call you out for your joke? He was kidding. Oh. She gave me some shit back and then I went up after because I, I frankly admire her and I'm a little intimidated because she's so successful and one round of her t-shirts pays my salary. Yeah. And I was like, uh, you know, we don't know each other that well. Mm -hmm. So taking a shot at someone like that, I was like, oh boy. And um, I went up afterwards. I was like, hey, you know, hope that was okay. And she was like, oh yeah, it was great. You kidding? Laughed about it. Fucking awesome. Yeah, that is the best attitude to have about it. You, yeah. you, you want to like, you hope that for yourself that you have that attitude. Nothing worse than being like, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> did you say about me? Yeah. <laughs> My son is not going to respect me in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, it is surprising for a comedy company. Yeah. But people just are unfamiliar with the. Uh, I think people will do better next time. I think people. I feel like everyone here takes shit constantly, and then that in that scenario. Yeah, but I think people. Like, it really bothers that? everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it literally yeah. bothers everyone to a man and woman. Yeah. Everything that's ever said about them, and they internalize nothing anyone, it. Nothing. Nothing. Any of us. From it. Nothing. Any of us is, are going to say is going to be half as bad as stuff that like people online say about them. Yeah. And then Nate. Nate set was just like what people say online yeah yeah <laughs> they just mind like the darkest opinions of people online and uh brought that all to light Bingo. which was uh hilarious but i think that yeah i think if we actually did i mean you couldn't just back it right up to that but doing an actual roast yeah, i feel like would be something people wanted to see you could invite comedians and it would have more of a pointed like 
you know what the goal is. You know, with this, you kind of didn't know what the goal. Some people understood the assignment. Some people just kind of stumbled on the stage. Well, would you want to do more of a roast battle? Two people roasting each other in the office? That we could do weekly. Yeah. Sassy doesn't like that idea. Doesn't like it. I just like the roast battle era is kind of past. I know, but what are we at Barstool if not a company that likes to try things that have been beaten to death? <laughs> <laughs> five years prior we should try breakdance battles <laughs> <laughs> should do graffiti offs yeah the original elements of hip-hop <laughs> yeah i don't know you know Dude, I, I uh all righty let's talk about groove life this podcast is actually sponsored by groove life so that's how that's how you know that that it's good and that groove life is good but you know what's not good? My old wallet. Hate my old wallet. Thick, dumb, stupid. Stupid, thick. Overflowing. Wallet. You could see it coming in my pants pocket a while ago. Hurts my back. A, a mile back away. Problems. Yes. When you put it in the back pocket, it gives you the sciatica. Gets the, gets the spine all out of whack. You don't want that. You want Groove, Groove Life. Life. It's time to update your wallet game with Groove Life. Groove Life. The Groove Wallet is sleek, low-profile wallet engineered for everyday use. One simple thumb motion. Perfectly fans out up to six cards for easy access to find everything you need. <laughs> like that. With that, like that. With its durable, high-quality aluminum outer shell, the wallet is unlike any wallet I've seen. And whatever happens to your Groove Life gear, they are they are here to help. With Groove Life's 94-year, no BS warranty, the Groove Wallet is the last wallet you'll ever need. 94 years? It's a long time have a groove wallet damn i'll almost be dead in 94 years well luckily you'll have your groove wallet for the rest of your life well that's what i love about that's the groove what i wallet. love about my groove wallet plus they just launched their new attachment the groove wallet go a perfect low profile companion for your groove wallet or iphone 12 13 14 that uses innovative micro suction technology to give you the ability to add another three cards plus cash slim wallet fits in your pocket no back pain mm-hmm you barely know it's even there. It's time to bring your wallet to the 21st century. Head to GrooveLife.com slash sun for 20% off all Groove Life products. It's the best offer that you'll find, but you have to use our link. That's GrooveLife.com slash sun for 20% off your order. One last time, GrooveLife.com slash sun for 20% off your order. Don't let me catch you with one of those bulky wallets. All righty, let's talk about Game Time, the exclusive ticket partner of Barstool Sports, created by fans for fans. Game Time is ticketing app that makes it easier than ever. Score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and again to the lowest price. I'm gonna go to the uh, maybe maybe the Jets Eagles game. Yeah, Just thinking about it. When's that? Football season. It's this football season. This I know year. when. This year, 2023. Okay, it's coming up. Well, not very specific, but have fun at that. That'll be a good time. <laughs> And it's possible to go to that with the Game Time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. The purchase process takes just two taps and 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. I might go to Birds Vikings week two Thursday night. That's fun. Do you want to go? Maybe. I'm going to the Bills, uh, Bills Jets. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Opening week. Yeah, yeah, we know a bunch of teams. And who's playing against each other? We know all that shit. And we know that thanks to Game Time. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download the Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email and redeem code BOYDAD for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. I interviewed Mark Cuban yesterday. Oh, shit. On, uh, on you ask him about Bobby, whatever that girl's name is. Bobby Alfafa or whatever. Bobby Lopside titties. Yeah, what's her name? <laughs> He's getting heat from all angles. Yeah. Good heat or bad heat? People hate her now. Why? I don't know. People quick. loved her. Now they hate her. Why do they hate her? I don't know. Monsanto type of shit. I guess like Drake and Lil Yachty unfollowed her. Industry plant. That was enough. Yeah. Well, I also think that uh, like there's so there's only so much you could do that uh, style. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, without without like having really distilled it and having it be exactly like knowing the character really well. Any break from the character is going to take away from how much people like it. So I think she went on BFS yeah. and kind of was herself. And people are like, what the fuck? Yeah. Which is hilarious that people didn't understand that she was doing a character on her show. And well, then she so, went on Dave's show and she's like, oh, so this is how she acts around white people. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, dude, it's because she's not interviewing Dave. They're interviewing her. Right. Right. I also think that her character she does 
a podcast is, is a long amount of time to be in that character. Right. Yeah. The clips. The clip. It was a clips show. And it's more suitable for a short video format. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I don't know if it's Jump the Shark or if she can recapture that money in a bottle, but like WME or whoever, her, who's repping her now? Someone. WME. Yeah. They're going to, they're definitely going to keep on pumping that thing. Oh, yeah. Also, I I, I don't think lopsided. people. I don't think people understand that having an agent doesn't mean that you're automatically like a superstar. No, like she was. Everyone's like, well, she had Drake on because she has an agent. Like Drake I have also an agent. Is just locked <laughs> Agent, I can't. We can't get Dr- you know Drake, and we can't get Drake on the show. I have an agent, and you know Drake personally, <laughs> and we're not we're getting not him close. on the show. No, it's Not like anywhere close to having him on the show. Just because you're at WME doesn't mean that you like have an open invite into Drake's house. Yeah. What would it take for us to get Drake on the show? I what would assume he, a large we would be sum pregnant of money. with his my child? death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would take my death. Yeah. And even still. And even still, he'd be like, I'd have to I have to think about it. Blackmail on a very oh, ruinous like a, level. Like a murder. Yeah. yeah. He used, did this to me. Yeah. He, he fucked me without me wanting him to. Yeah. Yeah. Unconsensual boy sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The NDAs that that guy has are fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. I think like Glenny, Glenny said he was going to do like a video series of like celebrities bathrooms that he's been in Yeah, from doing Sunday conversations. But the NDA from Drake would be like half a million a post or some shit like oh. that. If it got reshared, it'd be another half a million. I'm probably violating the NDA by yeah. saying that. Because we got an email when they did Drake. Mm-hmm. We got an email when they did Drake, and it was like a long list of things to not talk about. Yeah, we might have to oh, I remember that this entire segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I, speaking I, of really nice bathrooms, though, so I when I interviewed Mark Cuban yesterday, I was at the house uh, where they filmed the Big Lebowski and Charlie's Angels, this uh, famous guy's house that's like on a bluff, seventy-five million dollar house on like the overlooking all of Los Angeles, like the original Hollywood Hills house. The bathroom is entirely mirrors. The whole house is. Uh, designed by John Lautner, who was the main acolyte of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. So no right angles in the entire house. Beautiful house. It's made entirely of glass. Um, I walked square into a glass wall. Oh, (laughs) really? I tried to walk out of the house and like a bird flying into a fucking perfectly buffed window, I smoked my face. Mm. I had a fucking water bottle in my hand. It fucking smashed against my chest, exploded. His assistant like came running over, making sure I was okay and didn't fucking smoke my nose, break my face. Um... And it, it, we got it all on camera. Really? <laughs> yeah. It looks so fucking bad. It just sounds like a fucking gong. It's just like... Dude, I think it didn't break. That would have been a fucking scene. And it's all glass. So like the house shatters around oh, me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just standing there. It must be some clear ass glass. It was so clear. Yeah. You, you When you watch the clip, you can't even tell... What, the, what I ran into until the second or third time you watch it, because even in the clip, it looks so fucking clear. Mm. That's crazy. <laughs> you want to watch the clip? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely did. So was it a nice place? It's... <laughs> oh, it's the bill of your hat. Yeah, thank God, dude. You can... Ru- you run it. Were back. you looking at your phone? I was just turning around, sensing where the light was. Oh, you weren't looking at your phone. <laughs> I just turned around and was looking down, and I just smoked myself into the wall. That's funny. The guy whose house it is is like an older guy, and his hearing's not great though. So he like kind of looked back and didn't even really look back. It was <laughs> the, just uh, the Wait, highest. See here, watch, watch this, Sass. Sass, here. stay with us here. Oh yeah, there you go. We're on the pod here. Yeah, that is fucking. Why Why is that there? Why is that glass there? I just watched it. Oh, God. How did he get it? Oh, you texted it? He texted it. Why is that glass there, though? The entire like house. Uh, the, the ethos of the house is kind of this combination with nature, indoor, outdoor, kind yeah. of flowing thing. So all of it feels inside and all of it feels outside. No wow. plaster, all concrete. Beautiful house. Beautiful. It's cool. It's really transcendent. It, what if there's like a hurricane? Like I can't imagine a house like that really holds up well in our LA. They just get its first hurricane ever this past week. Is it just the house must just explode? <laughs> it's 
probably why it's all they just got, had to put a bunch of fresh glass in. <laughs> this guy's house was so insane. He's like this 83 year old guy who uh, every picture of him. He's he's courtside at every single Lakers game. He's been to over five thousand NBA games, and he always has a Scandinavian model that's like six three with him. Or Cuban? No, the guy whose house it is. We oh, another okay. guy's house. Oh, you weren't allowed to go to actual Cuban's place. No, God, no. But he's this guy's probably cupped more breasts than any man on earth. Like, Cuban? No, no. <laughs> Stop trying to put smut on fucking Mark Cuban's name, dude. It sounds like you're using like a you're you're talking about Cuban in like a different. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the guy whose house this is, James, whatever the hell his name was. That's crazy. So you, were you really like they James were like Goldstein? Were, oh, okay. Whose house makes it was? Sense. <laughs> what do you mean it makes sense? He's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why does uh? <laughs> Why were you not allowed at Mark Cuban's place? He's not living. We weren't not allowed at Mark Cuban's place. We were going to do this interview with a billionaire. They wanted to do the interview at at like the W Hotel, and Pat Bev was like, "No, we need to do this at a fucking awesome place." And so originally, did he say that to Mark Cuban? No, he said it to like your team, Tyler. (laughs) And Tyler had to call up Mark Cuban (laughs) and be like, "Yo, that that we're not doing it at a fucking hotel. We're not doing it at the fucking W. You broke boy, dude." But uh. Mark Cuban just rolled up solo. He's just really? a billionaire, just like rolled up like five minutes early. Yeah, uh, you probably think he rolled up solo. He probably had like snipers in the trees. No, he shit. didn't, dude. Because yeah, they hundred percent. They had just seen Jeff Bezos out, and Jeff Bezos did have snipers in the trees. And Pat Bev brought it up to uh, Cuban before the interview, and he like laughed at Jeff Bezos for having snipers in the yeah. trees. Well, I think Jeff Bezos is significantly richer than Mark Cuban. He's the richest, yeah. You know? Or he vies for probably it. by like a hundred billion. Him and, uh, Elon. Yeah. Yeah, his wife. His wife is the richest lady. She's the original the ho- homie hopper. She she originally... She, she she divorced. She's broken up from the teacher she married. His wife? So was he the richest teacher? Yeah. He's Bezos, Bezos teacher his wife, the they got divorced. When they got divorced, she became the richest woman on earth. Then she married a high school teacher. Hmm. And now they've split up. And now he's yeah, the mind. richest man in the Oh, well, I don't think he's teaching dodgeball anymore. Yeah. You're like a slur, by the way. You know, it's <laughs> it's interesting you say that because uh if I think about what I was supposed to do in my life, it's probably teach. Yeah. And yet there was that silly fucking aphorism, you know, those who can't do teach. teach. Yes. And uh those who can't teach, teach gym. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that saying, I couldn't get past it. And also for the fact that teachers just don't make any money in this country. But um, <laughs> that guy has to be the richest teacher by almost all of the money he that probably he has. had a prenup. Uh, but even yeah. with some prenups, don't you get like a little taste? I'm get a little certain taste. that she he probably, probably she probably got, threw him a bill. She probably threw him a <laughs> no, I don't think she gave him dude, when a you have billion that, dollars. Dude, she's probably like, Yeah, you can have one of my fifty. He must have probably gave him fifty. A million to ten million dollars. Bill. She gave him a bill. She didn't. Of course she did. He must have been incredible in the bedroom. Yeah. For her to marry him. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) Jew it. Jew it. Any relation to Goldstein? (laughs) Any relation to Smitty's text? (laughs) (laughs) Um the I was I was thinking though, that saying that ruins that that scares so many people away from the job of yeah. teaching. And also, it occurred to me, um, you know, those who can't do teach, I'm not so sure that I want to do anymore. <laughs> You're done doing. I'm pretty much done doing. I'm just getting started doing. I don't know how much more I want to do. Doing is not fun. Doing is awesome. It's way better than teaching. There's no security in doing, though. You want to have like a you want to you want to be a mentor. Teaching is has the most security of all time. You just get tenure and cannot give a fuck anymore. Yeah, pretty much. You could just phone that shit in. Yeah, you just get a big ass book with all the answers in the back. Also, who are you to say that you do? I do constantly. I don't think people I don't think there are many people who do less. <laughs> or who don't do I, do. I work do. constantly. Your version of doing is I work Francis all the time. joke. <laughs> <laughs> I I work every single Minute of the day. You're doing is Francis saying your jokes out loud and then saying Hell you no. did. Yeah. I get a couple hours at night, usually 1 to 3 a.m. where I'm not doing. 
No, that's when you are doing. You get like four hours a week of doing. No. 15 minute right. increments. You're doing no. so little that you're pretty much teaching. That's crazy. <laughs> you are on the verge that's of a teacher. Crazy you might talk. as well just call you're yourself a teacher. A teacher at but this you're point. like an assistant teacher. <laughs> that's crazy. Or a substitute teacher, kind of. <laughs> All I do is do. You're just rolling in a fucking TV to being like, we're watching Animal Planet. That's today. you, man. Honestly, well and the way that you were kind of like telling Francis how to do the joke, that's teaching. Yeah, you were a kind of a non-doer teacher. I wouldn't. Uh, the that's because society prevented me from doing. <laughs> so you must. You were <laughs> castigated to the role of teach, <laughs> of a teacher. Yes, <laughs> they shot me down. <sighs> yeah, society wouldn't let you do. So you taught. There were some choices made that I was confused on, like some people who replaced me and why. You know, want to want to air that out? I feel like no, it was just like I, there was so many people that just went up there and were like. uh I don't really know what to say. Uh, I guess let's just roll the award. <laughs> it's like, well, why? Why was I cut? Why did they need? Why do we need to hear that? It's important how angry you are at this. You need to be fueling this anger, like hold it in your hand, like a fucking hot coal. Dude, you got the best of all worlds. You got the credit. He had his cake and ate it. Everyone said Sass should have performed. I wanted to go up, brother. I wanted to. I wanted to be under the lights. Get the mic in my hand. And okay. everyone. So you got you got sympathy, credit, real, and expectations, and like, uh, and moral yeah. high ground. You yeah. got to be sanctimonious yeah. about it and be like, I should have been. Po- uh, I should have been. You got to undress. A, uh, it's a, true. A, a higher up it would have been much more underwhelming if I did go up. Exactly. Right. With no fanfare. Yeah. Bingo. But you got to have a whole storyline about it. I think that you made out pretty fucking good. Pretty, pretty well. Solid. Pretty solid. Pretty good. How was the t- your time in uh, Massachusetts? It was great. Yeah? Saw yeah. the fam? Saw the fam. Just kind of chilled for a while. My cousin got engaged. That was cool. Dude, I was at my... my uh, yeah, your buddy got Mike got engaged. My, my Mike got engaged. Shout out to him. Best Mike. In... Uh, in Wildwood, New Jersey, yeah, which is the most distilled Philadelphian Philadelphians. People who go to Wildwood are like, they think everybody from every other Jersey Shore town is like hoity-toity and like over the top. Mm-hmm. And we went out drinking for the entire day. Oh, yeah. That's this what we a, did. Yeah. It's like a... It's, it's this Wildwood is a scumbag town. Proud scumbags. Yeah. Like true fucking distilled fucking scumbags. And we're out all night fucking dancing, drinking. People were very cool. Let us have our space. But we were like kind of in a dance circle. And some guy came and my, my wife's there dancing. And some guy came up to me and was like, yo, is this your girlfriend? I was like, no, it's my wife. And he's like, oh, all right. And he came back one second later. He's like, yo, can I get one dance with her? What? I was like, no. He was what like, the fuck? He was like, come on, one dance with her. Was this like a fan or is this a random dude? Random dude. He was like, come on, one dance with her. I was like, no. And then he was like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like he me. Fuck you. <laughs> Holy shit. What? Wow. I what couldn't you- believe it. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. That's crazy. He I- might be the best man. <laughs> He truly Did you guys have is. to duel? He, uh, I, I immediately like drew my revolver. I was yeah. like, no, 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 no. Shot him dead in the floor like Frank. Did you have Lucas. to drop him? Uh, no, I was just, I, I was like, what, what is happening? That yeah. this is such a Philly scumbag, like real ass distilled place that they don't recognize a woman's autonomy. Oh yeah, right. like asking right. the dude for permission. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, let me dance with your wife. <laughs> That's crazy. No. Like, let me know. Come on, just like one dance with your wife. Or the, would no. you want to like have a slow dance with her? Like, what, what was his, what were... It was like, it was like 1980s Jersey club music. It was like... <laughs> and he wanted to, he was like, just one dance. Yeah, those like, songs don't end. No. Right. It's just one loop. He wanted it like the one dance would have been four hours of just like, just at first he thought he could politely like ask his way into a prima nocta situation. It's like, yeah. what the hell are you yeah. talking about, dude? This like he upside been down pineapple, up. like swinger from fucking South Jersey. It just, I'd never experienced anything like that. I had to like, I was like on the verge of a blackout and I had to keep on like telling that story to sew it into my memory so I could bring it back <laughs> and like share it with more people. Cause I could not believe that. That's so funny. <laughs> Fuck you. Boy, it's strange. You know, you look back, it sounds as if he's coming from a different era. 
when he says, hey, Sparky, say. Say. Hey. Mind if I cut in? Mind if I step in? Mind if I cut in? Especially, I, is that something that I, I was always under the impression that was only something that happened at like weddings. Yeah, like, or like, like a uh, and have this dance. Mm-hmm. Like I, don't like, I don't think like I don't think at like a New Jersey club. You're like, mind if I cut in on this one? Yeah, I can see like when they're like, what are you like grinding your shoulder and you turn around just as he slides? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some, it's, like, it's like a James Bond. Your wife move. just has no say. <laughs> like, oh, I guess I'm dancing with this guy now. <laughs> oh, I said it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Just gets like one dance. <laughs> it's one dance. Uh, one dance. How many, how many camels will you give me for that? Yeah, what's the dowry look like? How many sheep? Yeah, can I get a fatted? Promise us a large portion of his herd. <laughs> where, are the, where are the acres that I will receive? You can get one shorefront property in North Wildwood, in Wildwood Crest. We need this. He promised us his finest cattle. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it was the craziest. I, I truly couldn't that's believe so it. So funny. After confirming that it was my wife. I'm surprised that uh, that didn't escalate more because it sounds very. Well, I would have dropped a fool for sure. Not good. And dude, at, at this bar, like, yeah, of course, at this bar, it was like some of these like distilled like Philly guys that were keep like they were coming up at the beginning. They're like, "Yo, I can't believe Roan is in the woods. <laughs> like you're in Wildwood. What are you doing out here? Yeah. <laughs> Big ass like Jack, like six five dudes with bowling shirts on, like who shook your fingers with two hands because they had like a baggie between these two fingers, like, and they're like anything you need. So at, at that point, like this guy, like I probably could have. Really, like, dudes really love throwing that around. Oh yeah, anything you anything need. anything you need. Let me yeah, know. I just love getting stuff for people. I could have whistled and like the bowling shirt mafia could have would have yeah. like whipped this guy's ass. But I I. I <laughs> chose to be like what is happening here yeah. but they do love to say anything you need yeah. your time with mook was <laughs> all they do is they just throw it around you need anything you call me I like that yeah I, like- you know, I was at a bar well when i went out with so i went out with my cousin and her fiance and his brothers and my sisters it's and, not it doesn't matter and uh <laughs> and we went out to a bar and we had we had also been drinking all day and i was like really fucked up and the, these dudes kept coming up to me and eventually this dude came up to me and he was like, he's like, dude, uh, I just wanted to say like big fan. He's like, I, I don't really fuck with Barstool at all. Like, I don't, I don't really like watch any Barstool shit. And then he proceeded to ask me like deeply, deeply rooted Barstool questions that no one would know unless you're watching like Barstool radio every day. Like yeah. he's like, so dude, Nate's speech was crazy. He was like, was that, do you have any backlash for that? And he's like, what's Kelly Keegs like in real life? And I'm like, dude, you're talking about like you, you you're not asking me press. about like pardon my take. You're asking about like the deep roots of Barstool. <laughs> and he's like, but I don't really fuck with Barstool at all like that. And people will justify it. They're like, I'm actually, I'm a dad. Dave guy, like, yeah. I don't like Barstool, but I, I consume every word the man. Yeah, I will yeah. pizza review here and there. Yeah, <laughs> it is preposterous how people do. Whatever that. happened to because we got high? Is that show not happening anymore? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they stopped on the second round of views. Yeah, they were going through the yeah, alphabet. Fran and Rhea resenting each other for getting engaged so close. Like in a way, was that like cannibalizing the thrill of getting engaged? Was it like behind the scenes, was there any? <laughs> do you think their fiancés uh, actually can be a fly on the wall? Yeah. It is so bizarre when people are like that. There is a, a subtle art to giving someone respect, and I really think it's a flyby. I think I had it. I had it uh, last night as I was flying back from Los Angeles. I saw uh, Kai Senet at the at the oh, uh, shit, airport, really? and uh, like going through security, there was like nobody there. He was there with like six. It, it, do you know who this dude is? Kai Just one streamer of the war. No, I was going to pretend as though I didn't let you guys finish. The he's thought. a streamer from New York and he's just like the biggest, biggest streamer in the world. Like he just is massive. For he's the, the guy that, remember that used Union Square riots? PS5 that was him. giveaway. That was him. That was him. Got he it. like can command the biggest. And I like, I don't think I would have been starstruck if I saw like fucking LeBron James as much as, or I was just like excited. I was like, I don't know how, like try to like try and get a picture with him, but it was going through airport security and I was just so low key just being like bro you're a legend dude and so he he even came back even more low-key like thank you so much bro <laughs> and i think i think that's the perfect interaction with a celebrity nice. i think that, just, that you said you're a legend, like, you're a legend <laughs> there's like an asian kid waiting to that take guy like he's like 19 yeah <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like an old grown man yeah. I'm like bro you're a fucking legend. you're a fucking legend. You're fu- like real low-key by the like, way i know drake if you ever like, need anything. <laughs> all right let me let me i'm gonna one up you, you though let me know if there's a low-key interactions with yeah yeah, yeah. so this was a couple years ago 
probably like four years ago. And I was in the West Village walking out of a coffee shop and I had my coffee and Louis CK was with his daughter yeah. and they were walking up the steps Yeah, and uh, I opened the door and held it for him mm. and he went, thank you. And I went like that. That's actually funny because uh, my raised my cup to him. My dad is the he knew I knew. Yeah. And yeah. I was a fan. Yeah. And my I dad, almost thought he I almost thought he said to me telepathically, thank you for allowing me to walk these streets uh as an equal and a friend with my daughter. He probably was thinking that. He probably was thinking that. Yeah. My dad had did the exact same thing with Larry David. Mm. Saw him in Martha's Vineyard and he just held the door open and gave him a nod. Yeah, nod. Larry David's the one that I don't know how I would react because you can't you really can't contain yourself can't, and you also can't he like is it's known that he does not want anyone to talk to him mm. that's a little bit much though if you're you've you've spent your life filming yourself and putting it on yeah. television to great financial gain but you're like no no i want i need i need my privacy it's like i think that there's i don't mind people coming up to me and talking to me i but i do think that these flyby interactions the way that the three of us just described are the best way where it's like you give them the credit they it takes no energy for them to go throughout their day you don't stop them you take nothing from them you are no you're not an energy vampire you give a little bit of energy right. to them right. and make it easy as fuck so, but at the same time i don't think larry david can be like i hate i hate when people come up to me mm. and then that's like his character it's like who he is yeah <laughs> well i think that it's a little bit uh i think he's a dickhead a little bit for that all right uh, i love larry david i think he's the best ever okay well, uh, that's as Nate said. You you have Shane Gillis's dick in your mouth too. <laughs> this is tense. I was talking about Larry David. It's got bro. tense. Yeah, I think that when uh, Louis C.K. looked at you, I think that he was kind of passing the torch of redheaded comedians. <laughs> I think like, he was I too. Like to think that. I think that he was kind of like really fall out of shape though to follow in his footsteps. Consciously, he's so goddamn funny. I was watching. I watched a bunch of his shit this weekend. Mm. I heard that he has uh, when everybody else gets like makeup to come in between their sets. I ho I heard he has a, a PA come out and stain his shirt between sets. Shovel him, yeah. Yeah, they just tousle his hair. <laughs> I've I've actually heard that as well. I think he does do that. <laughs> I think. Then that's an affect. I don't respect that. Just that like much. he's like Pinto Ron. He just stands in the, front like, of the down mustard. To earth yes, but if it's median. if it's manufactured, then it does it submarines the entire. Disheveled, like um, oh, I, well, I don't think it's like a widely out of bed. known fact. Well, then, okay, well, you just and how the hell do you? We'll know cut it. it. We'll cut it out. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're not protecting him. That, that happened enough in this Hollywood is already. Destroy his career. You know what, <laughs> Louis? Um, what the moment where I was like, oh, he, when he did the Shane's pod and did the presidents. Yeah, he's so smart and so well read that he couldn't help himself. You know, and to me. To have that level, we all know, given how articulate he is on stage, yeah. that like this guy isn't as much of a schlub yeah. as he would have us believe. Yeah. But to hear that, I mean, he's read a biography of like 30 of the presidents. 45 yeah, like Frank presidents. Like Franklin Pierce or some shit. Yeah. And, um, has incredible depth of knowledge on so many of them. Yeah. I lost the, uh, the whole, the whole idea of him being like a, a slob. Yeah. When I, Mark Norman told a story on a podcast where he said that he was opening for him and they were hanging out in his hotel room and he farted. He farted and he got mad. He got furious. Yeah, he got mad. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh, too. damn. <laughs> I would think. I would, I, th I would, I would laugh. At a fart? I, I always laugh at a fart. I'm not someone, I don't really get mad at farts. You don't laugh at a stinky fart. Yeah. I you do. laugh at a loud fart. Yeah, a loud yeah. fart. But a stinky really fart is not funny. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny. No, it's full not. of full of sound. Like the and reaction, signifying nothing. The reaction it gives to everyone is funny. And was like, "Oh, that's hilarious!" <laughs> like that came out of my body, and now you guys are all running away because it yeah. smelled so bad. Mm -hmm. Francis farts on stage, and he's like, "That was that was Sass, by the way." Yeah, <laughs> uh, Sass gave me that one. Sass told me to do that. That wasn't me. <laughs> we got to go to pot two. All right, we're rotating. Say less. How much do you guys need to do? We, need to, we have like three more minutes. Are we could? Are we done? We're done. We're done. Can be done. We could just be done. We'll say. We well, just get to two fifty eight or whatever. Because they gotta come in here. It's a pretty tight schedule. Have they just told you? 
get out. Uh, wait. So, so as we're leaving, uh, we're, we're still recording. Fra- uh, 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 when we go to live shows, Francis is 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 going to do our Wednesday shows with yeah. us. Oh, hell yeah. Francis, that's honored. I'm I'm honored. That's I awesome. appreciate that. Yeah. Um, How are we going to start that? Just good good ass chemistry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Within the month. Within the month. Yeah. This yeah. month in September, we're going to start doing live shows on Wednesdays. Francis will be part of them. Um, and we got to figure out what time we want to do because we were going to do 1 p.m. <laughs> but apparently there's some other show that's using that time slot now. <laughs> we're going to do 12. We're going to do 11. It's just fucked. Uh, dates? Yeah. Uh, by the way, I know I've given Sass a lot of shit for how expensive his ticket prices are, but out and about actually charges an arm and a leg. Uh also, our tickets are the exact same price. No, no. We have the same agent. They're all the same price. Not true. <laughs> it is. He'd have you it's believe exactly that, true. He's not. He's tails out of school. I'm in. Um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, at the House of Comedy. That's September seventeenth to eighteenth, or eighteenth and nineteenth. And then New York City, big dates, big dates, big dates. Gotham, running it back. I got a little sass uh, opening for me. He's gonna take all my jokes. Um, instead of letting me have them. And that is September 28th and 29th. And then I'm on to uh, fucking Providence, Boston, Toronto, and somewhere else. Tickets at FrancisHellis.com. The Hero We Need Door. Anything else, Sass? No dates for you? I got Arlington, Tampa coming up. I have Arlington as well. Those are going to be in Tampa. I want to say he's getting moved. Not fully, like it's going to move up. Uh, it might be Saturday, Sunday is what I'm trying to say, but I'm not sure yet. But uh, yeah, get tickets for those. Arlington is in two weeks. It's going to be fun. Draft house. LilSasquatchWebsite.com. All right. See you guys next week. See you guys next week. Ah. I didn't care if I died. This is so fucked up, guys. Honestly. I'll eat someone. Sleep tight. Welcome to season two of Barstool's Most Dangerous Game Show. She's not stoked to be here. I'm not happy. I'm not pumped. This just doesn't seem fair. This is a nightmare. This is an absolute nightmare. I want $25,000. I want the fucking money. (laughs) Oh, Oh, my. It's a whole new season. It's a whole new game. Oh my god! Yeah! This has broke a lot of people. Woo. Your heart stops. The reality really hit, but there's no turning back. Guys, I can't do this. I'm sorry. This is Barstool's most dangerous game show. Presented by Mattress Firm. <laughs>